There's probably more locations in the world than any one person can visit in an entire lifetime. Whilst Microsoft Flight Simulator doesn't have them all, it certainly does have many. But the real trick is how do you go about finding and visiting them as a good number simply are not searchable from within the game. Let's take a look. So for this, we need a couple of external tools. The first is Google to help us find some great locations. Unless of course you already have locations in mind. A quick web search and we have a location. Next up, we want Google Maps. Now, you don't have to use Google, but I personally prefer it. So put in your location here, your destination. Uh, and just so we can use a proof of concept here, putting the same location into a flight simulator gives zero results. So back on Google Maps, up in the URL up at the top there, we can see some numbers. These are the GPS coordinates. You can copy and paste those. And I'm going to post them into Bing Maps so we can get a look at aerial photography here, just so we can determine whether or not it's actually worth visiting in a flight simulator as it uses these same uh, mapping data. Now you can just use Bing Maps, you don't need to use Google as well, but I find it useful to actually compare the two. So this looks like an interesting location. Let's go back to Flight Simulator and drop in the GPS coordinates. It's taken us to exactly the same location. However, the map data is much lower quality here, so it makes it a little bit harder to see what's going on. But based on Bing Maps, we know this is going to be pretty good. So left click on it and select Set as Destination and off we go. Now once here, we're free to fly around the location. Keep in mind that we will have spawned in exactly at those GPS coordinates, so the uh, location will probably be right beneath us. I'm using active pause here, I showed that in a previous video. I'm going to use the uh, showcase cam, and we're going to have a bit of a look around just to see if that location is here, and if so, what it actually looks like. And there you can see it, the desert oasis looks pretty good. Seems to match more or less what we saw on both Google Maps as well as Bing Maps. Quality is not quite as good, of course, because this will be auto-generated. This won't be a photogrammetry, but it's a location that probably no one has handcrafted. So all in all, it's pretty good. And that should give you an idea of just how quick it can be to find some quality locations. We're going to have a quick fly around this one. In fact, something very fun planned here. It's a little tiny lake. We're going to try it landing in here. Don't try this at home. This isn't the way to land in water. And it's pretty obvious what's going to happen here, but I thought it would be fun to try it nonetheless. Yep, there we go. We shot straight across the lake and through the front door. Well, into the front door anyway. So, uh, other locations. Let's see what else there is. Again, we go back to Google. There's loads and loads of locations here. And this one is especially interesting. You'll see the reason why right here. It's a coloured lake pink in the image or red in the satellite photography. Again, putting in a lake killer there in a flight simulator, it doesn't bring up a location. Bing Maps, just to get an idea of the data, it is indeed red. Let's put the GPS coordinates in and we're good to go. Again, keep in mind that the resolution of the world map is fairly low. In flight then, we're going to take a quick look at the lake. And yes, the glass of the canopy is dirty there. It does need a good clean. And we can see the edge of the lake right there. It does have that pink reddish hue to it. The water itself does look blue from this distance, but you'll find as we get closer, it is actually colored the correct way. Now, the interesting thing about this, and I touched on the subject a moment ago with the Oasis, is that this is not handcrafted. And chances are pretty high that not a single developer at a Sobo studio have ever even seen it. This is simply down to the technology used to craft the areas. And yeah, seems to be pretty darn accurate. Another nice location to visit then. Let's do one more. This is a fly geezer. And once again, we're looking at it here in Google Maps. Like I say, you don't need to use Google. You can use either Google or Bing Maps, but I do prefer to use both. Again, we can see the quality difference between the two. Google is much higher resolution when compared to Bing in this particular case. The colorations are also a little bit different, but it's worth going to. Now you can also see the GPS coordinates are available in Bing Maps. Just right click on a location in Bing Maps, select drop a pin and the GPS coordinates will be, be there for you to copy and paste into Flight Simulator. And in flight, we can see yet again, this is another really nice location. So then that is a really easy way to find the awesome looking places around the world. And it's actually the perfect way to plan out your flights and sightseeing. 
Of course, if you don't want to spawn directly on top of these locations, once you've got the longitude and latitude coordinates and you plug them into Flight Simulator, you can make it a part of a flight route. Maybe you want to make it as part of the destination and fly from it from a few miles away or a nearby airport, or maybe you want to make it a point of interest along a route. All are very easy to achieve once you've got the location. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.